Okay. Well, welcome everybody. Thank you, Bar th Welcome everybody <laughs> to Cheat Talk. Uh, we are live, so uh, I'm very excited. Thank you so much for coming here and being part of this, uh, this uh, group, this talk. Um, today we're going to talk about best practices in this time of the year to, uh, to do, to practice, to strengthen your body, to harness energy, and a little bit of wis wisdom uh, about uh, winter uh, time. And this is a very special time today because it's solstice. It's actually the darkest, the darkest night, the darkest day of the year. And uh, that has a, has a lot of meaning in the Taoist tradition, Qigong, and there's a lot of, a lot of mysticism around it. Um, not only in Taoism, also in, uh, in all traditions and religion, Christmas time and in and, and, and Jewish tradition. So this uh, darkest time of the year is a very special time. So we're going to talk a little bit about it and see what's, what's best to do to get the most out of this time. My name is Ellie Cohen. I'm a medical Qigong practitioner, energy healing coach. I've been doing this uh, uh, practice for, for many years, over 10 years, sharing wisdom from the Tao and uh, pr um, a movement practice of Qigong uh, and movement. And, uh, you know, my style of Qigong, what's special about it is really the, the connection between the mind and the body. <laughs> Qigong is not just another form of uh, movement, of uh, movement practice. It's really an activation of uh, mind, of intention, of uh, your emotions. And, uh, and the, really, this is kind of like the, the blessing and the, uh, of, of this practice and the, and the message of healing of this practice. So uh, with no further ado, let's, do, let's start with a little meditation so we're all on the same page. Uh, if you will, please... Uh, close your eyes if you uh, if you want to kind of uh, go with us in this uh, journey. Uh, allow yourself to close your eyes and just feel your body inwardly. Sensing and connecting with the with the felt sense of your body as you sit here now. And as we come into the body, we usually start with the point of contact of the body with, uh, with the earth. So feeling the feet touching on the floor. And the sit bones on the chair. So just allow yourself to, to feel gravity. Yeah, to feel the force of gravity pulling on your body. And we begin by starting to align our body with gravity. And the way we do that is that we're softening the belly, we're softening the legs, we're softening any shoulder tension. So we just go and scan and see where we are and allow your body to soften and relax. So instead of holding yourself up, you're feeling like you're being held by the earth, by the chair beneath you. Allow yourself to, to sink into the chair, to soften into the chair and to the earth. And at the same time, allow your crown to be lifted up towards the ceiling and the sky, bringing a self sense of uh, uprightness and composure. Since we are in winter time, Let's, let's allow ourselves to put the hands on the lower abdomen. Now feel the breath in your lower abdomen as it comes in naturally, as it goes out naturally. Is there any sense of the breath in this area? And what happens is, as we soon as we put our attention in the lower abdomen, the breath tends to go there. Because the energy follows our attention. Yeah. 
And let's lift one hand and put it over the heart center. And start this process, we're going to call it wave breathing in the beginning, but it's really a yin type of practice. We'll go through it. So one hand on the heart, one hand on the lower abdomen. And wave breathing, meaning that you're filling up the lower abdomen first and then goes up. The breath goes up to the rib cage and the chest. So just filling up your vessel from the bottom up. On the inhale, the top of the inhale, the, chest, the breath is in the chest, and then exhale, chest, rib cage, lower abdomen. In Qigong, this is an emotionally balancing breath. And just visualize a silver thread a silver thread between the, the lower abdomen and the chest. So the silver thread is parallel to the spine inside of you. Just like a, a thread yeah, that you're scanning as you go up on the inhale and down on the exhale. And see if you can really grasp every section of that silver thread. And allow yourself to extend that silver thread into the center of the brain. So you inhale, belly, chest, brain, center of the brain, and exhale, brain, chest, lower abdomen. See if you can scan any area on that silver thread in the throat, the solar plexus, everywhere, creating a continuum. This uh, meditation is a yin type of meditation. So focusing on the most yin part of the body. Nice. So let's bring both hands on the heart center. And from here, open the hands to the side and open the eyes. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. So, uh, so what is the best thing to uh, to do for winter? What is the best qigong practice? And just a little bit of wisdom about the this time of the year, the most the the darkest time of the year. And uh, you know, we, uh, first recommendation would be to do meditation. <laughs> and this type of meditation that we just did is very very good for you. Yeah, it just goes on the energy centers themselves. And you really want to kind of scan the, that silver thread and find and see where you are lacking. So where, where you feel that area very good and where in your body there's a, there's a gap, like you don't feel it so well. And so you know where these energy centers, you can work on opening them. So this is just for this meditation. It's a very uh, healing type of meditation and aligning all your energy system. Yeah, so we have different energy system. Uh, you know, in the yogic tradition, it's called chakras. Uh, we call it energy centers. And, um, and each one has a certain value, has a certain value of part of your personality associated with the different organs in the body. There's, it's, it's a very elaborate system. And really working on opening all that area with this type of meditation is uh, very healing especially if you're teaming it up with the breath. So, so this is an invitation to do today <laughs> in the darkest time of the year. And the darkest time of the year is very special. So it's the most yin, type, most yin part of the year. 
the winter in general is very uh, is a yin part of the year and today is the most yin <laughs> so what we want to and what is the power of yin so last time we talked about the power of water and how water in qigong in traditional chinese medicine uh, considered to be the strongest element the most powerful element people that are acti acting from a yin place from a non-doing are very powerful water is very powerful is very powerful than any other thing that we know better than fire than metal than wood and soil water is very powerful and so um so that and and it's it's very yin what does that mean very yin what does it mean that it, the darkest time of the year uh you know and so what what it means is that our you know we have the young side of our of our personality and or of our of our existence and we have the yin side the yin side is the hidden side the dark side is the unseen side is the things that we don't see in ourselves. it's also the subconscious mind it's also the unconscious so uh it's the night time it's where the dreams comes you know the way you sleep at night if you sleep good or bad really really tells a lot, a lot about your connection with your yin side too uh, but this is the time to manifest yeah in the winter is a time to uh in qigong tradition is to store energy this is not the time to go out and uh and expand a lot of energy and party <laughs> it's actually time to uh conserve energy this is time for for storing energy storage is the essence of winter energy yeah every all if you look outside the trees everything is storing energy yeah the animals are all in hibernation it's a time to store energy and where do we store energy in the dantian the lower that's the area the lower abdomen that energy center is the area where we where we can uh, um re uh, uh kind of build a lot of chi in our kidney energy and and build our uh you know so lower abdominal uh, breathing and meditation would be very healing because it's very healing for the kidney it nourishes and amplify the kidney energy which is part of your longevity yeah uh, and the ability to heal fast is part of a kidney energy so lower abdominal breathing and meditation would be very good stillness postures in qigong would be very powerful in this time of the year so staying in posture for a long time the energy would come in into the inside of the body so if you cut the like if you do a cut here in the in your arm or in one the most yin part of the body is the bone and the bone marrow yeah the most young is the skin and the muscle but the yin is the inside right so the inside would be the bone marrow and the bone yeah and that governs by kidney so your uh, bone marrow uh, and now in science they actually uh, actually not very long ago they actually found that the kidney actually there's a hormone that triggered the uh, the bone marrow and the stem cell so that's very interesting that in chinese medicine that that's that is always talked about and most recently they found that hey the kidney actually uh actually uh, uh stimulate the the bone marrow and the growth of, of of a stem cell into immune cell and all that stuff so uh so what would it mean in terms of qigong and energy practices it means that we it means that we more doing stillness practices uh standing practices are very good in qigong and uh and and meditation and what it means from a spiritual side or from like what we talked about the subconscious mind uh it means that we want to in this time of the year that's the best time to pray <laughs> to pray and to focus on intention and visualization and what you want in life it's a time to connect to our truth to our dark side <laughs> to our fears and to not <laughs> and not too afraid to go there into our into our shadow side yeah so the shadow side holds a lot of power 
And we often are afraid from going into something in ourselves that we don't like, that we feel maybe ashamed of or afraid or and not confident. And that's the time to embrace it, to embrace uh, the yin side, the shadow side. And from that power arise, from that, from that embracement, from that, uh, uh, from that action, you can actually uh, go out and, and, uh, and find from the truth of who you are really an embracement, you can actually go out and in the spring, that's the time of, of growth and, on, and, and kind of like uh, manifesting our visions for, for that we um, kind of worked on in the, in the winter. And so, uh, yes, yeah, so also a full moon time. So we say in Qigong, full moon time is a good time for praying, for visualization, for dreaming, dreaming about the future, for seeing yourself in a good health. Yeah. And so full moon is, a, is also a yin type of a day. But today is also, it's very close to a full moon. Full moon just happened a day or two ago. So it's still in the phase of full moon, which is about six days, three in and three after. And we are in the most yin time of the year, uh, of the day, the, the most day, the whole 365 days, and that's the most yin um, uh, day. So it's an invitation to practice, uh, to practice meditation, to uh, uh, you know, if you have a recording of a Qigong class to do Qigong, to focus, we did it actually this morning and good morning Qigong. And we focused more on internal practices of like seeing yourself healed, seeing, seeing what you want in your life. And uh, from, a, from, from a health perspective, from relationship perspective, from wealth, from whatever you want, really, this is, uh, this is the time to do it. And, um, yeah, the specialty about standing practice, about meditation. And in Qigong, we seated meditation is great. And in Qigong, we do a lot of standing meditation. And standing meditation tends to strengthen the inside of the body, the yin part of the body, so joint and bones. And there's a reason for that. And that's a, that's a whole workshop right there. But uh, maybe we can do it. We actually did it before about how to strengthen bone. And uh, so the whole sequence that we're going to start sharing, the sequences in classes from now on would be about that, would be about uh, storing energy. There's going to be a lot of standing posture and the, and the movement would be very good for joint and bones. Uh, and there's emphasis on, uh, on lower back. If you, uh, if you want to uh, work on your lower back, I know a lot of people who, uh, suffer from lower back problems. That's uh, very important to, to strengthen the lower back because that's where the kidneys are. Um, so lower back issues would be related to uh, kidney deficiency usually. Uh, so uh, yes, yeah, so it's a time to, time to uh, embrace your shadow side, <laughs> your fears of coming to a Qigong class, maybe. <laughs> uh, so this is, uh, this is kind of a synopsis, a very quick uh, chat and talk about, about Qigong and uh, the darkest time of the year and uh, connecting with our truth, usually meditation or self-contemplation during this time of the year is very fruitful. Things come to you. Uh, I've experienced it much more than the summer. Yeah, it's the energy is conducive to uh, sitting and contemplating, uh, eating warm food, and and uh, you know, spiritually you can connect with spirits. With uh, the, it's it's very very powerful. Um, so that's that's uh, what I what I suggest is dream, pray, <laughs> pray visualize. Uh, work on your truth, connect to what you are afraid of, and don't be afraid to go to where you don't want to go. And, uh, and th this is where we find 
the gems <laughs> usually usually outside of our comfort zone uh so this is kind of more internal work yeah internal is yin external is yang so we're doing more internal work during this time of the year all right i want to open it to like because there's a big group here so i just i can talk more but i'd like to open it to like just sharing or questions um yes gail go ahead good to see you here unmute yourself Okay, I love what you have to say, uh, especially about the fears, because our emotions actually can dominate or run us. And so we can ask the emotion, what do my fears say? And have that aspect of self speak to you. Now, quickly, during this time, this very fertile time of, of our year, there's a ritual and you can write down that which you want to either release or bring to you on a three inch by three inch piece of paper, sign it with your name. You know, this is dear source or whatever you want to call it and sign it. Sometimes I use a candle and I use my thumbprint as a way of initially acknowledging this is my desire, my intention, this is what I'm putting my attention on, whether I want to release or I want to increase, bring to me or let go of from me. And then you fold it in four parts and each part speaks to air, earth, fire and water. And then you bury it, you give it to the goddess, you give it to mother earth and release it from self. And that speaks to the subconscious mind. And I hope that's helpful. Oh, beautiful. That's very helpful. Thank you so much for sharing this. This is a beautiful, beautiful practice. This is a, kind of a very shamanic practice, right? And uh, very ritualistic. And uh, yeah, this is, this is beautiful to do something like that now and in the winter. So uh, thank you, Gail. Thank you so much. Uh, anybody else wants to say or ask something to share and to inspire or to ask? Go ahead. We have more. All right. So I'm going to continue if nobody wants to talk. Oh, there's a chat box here. What do we say? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Gail. Yeah. Bart saying thank you, Gail. Yeah, I said that too. <laughs> um, so, yes. Yeah, so question the, for Gail. Yeah. Gail, yeah. can you do both on the same sheet of paper? Can you put down what you want to bring in and also what you want to release? Or? That's conflicting for your subconscious mind, Claudia. Your subconscious mind, basically your unconscious is the most uh, potent part of you. And the subconscious is the messenger. So you want to give your subconscious the message that I am releasing this and then you give it to the earth. You can, there's fire rituals, there's water rituals, but this specifically during this time of darkness, you're giving it to the earth, which is the dark, the unconscious, and you're giving it to that source to release it from self. Now to bring it to you, is a completely different process. That too, you can bury. And you can bury it with maybe, you can make a sigil or perhaps something that speaks to you, Claudia, like for you, feathers, because you wanna fly. And so maybe you put a feather in there and you say, I want to fly with this intention and I would like the goddess or the source to help me receive it. Mm -hmm. And that's what you bury and give to mother earth. Is that Thanks. helpful? Yeah, very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, this is beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, uh, Gail, for this powerful. Yeah, Peter, go ahead. Peter, welcome. Thank you. Hi. Um, question I have for you is I totally understand what you're saying about this is a very, very yin time. And I'd like to um, get your opinion on um, if we bring in, you brought in the chakras, but I want to bring in from the yogic philosophy, the doshas. Um, if you, if somebody has a very strong tendency this time of year to fall into inertia, 
and laziness and things like that. Um, it, it seems to me, I want to, it seems, it's all about balance. It, it seems to me it's all about balance. Um, so I, I just, I have to always be careful this time of the year because I, I live in the Midwest and um, this is a place where it's cold. You want to stay inside. You don't want to do anything. You don't want to exercise. And if you tend to have a personality or a constitution that is prone to inertia and laziness, it can be really dangerous mm -hmm. <laughs> um, from many perspectives, psychologically, emotionally, physically. Um, yeah. people, people might tend to eat more. People might drink more. People might do things more in excess for just um, uh, maladaptive coping mechanisms. <laughs> because you might not be able to get out of your house for a while. Um, so can you just respond to that? I mean, yeah. I, I do understand it's very much a yin type of year, but I think some of us, me personally, I need to be careful this time of year that I don't become too yin. Yeah, yeah, for sure. This is, thank you for mentioning that. We kind of touched on, on it a little bit last uh, talk. But uh, from another question that came in, that's a perfect, that's, that's so, so good. Thank you so much for raising this because this is a very important part. And this is really, um, you know, when, when we are in the cold season, the energy tend to contract and to sink. Yeah, and, and it's very easy. People talk about the winter blues and a laziness and, and a lack of motivation and all that. So we don't want uh, frozen chi. <laughs> when the when the chi gets stagnant and cold can definitely do that uh it's it's not good for us and and the way to uh to counteract it is to connect with the heart and um and this is why we have all these holidays around the world that are all about all about love and connecting with loved one and visiting another and cooking <laughs> food and connecting with connecting with uh, with the heart because the heart is the fire element and when you and and this is really how to energize or to use chi correctly is to when you have water and you have fire and then the fire cooks the water and then there's steam right so what is the what is the what is chi is the steam so if there's no fire <laughs> during this song if there's no love if there's no this is why people sing songs also not only in uh, christmas not only in christian tradition all over the world in the winter even jewish tradition hanukkah is all about songs yeah so singing is warming the heart yeah it's also releasing emotions so um chanting or singing it's really warming and so so it's very very important to connect with uh, with this emotion of, of love and uh, y you know and and uh, one of our first practices that we do is warm up the hands and put them on the lower back on the lower back and warming up the kidneys <laughs> so this so the chi in the kidneys won't get stagnant because we don't want cold water so really that's very important and it is all about balance and you see that there's actually more acts communal acts of love and togetherness in the winter starting for thanksgiving and christmas and going together and chanting and singing and being together is very very important you see animals they're all together hugging <laughs> in the winter and so um so that's that's very important love and connection love and connection is very important and you know you don't need to uh, i mean uh and gail is saying something and excellent alexia for winter is bone broth great for kidneys yeah and that's true too. <laughs> we're gonna talk there's a whole uh about food maybe we can do another chi talk about food and how to nourish your kidney chi with food yeah bone broth is really good one uh, but um, yeah, I don't know if that's uh, talking to you, Peter. Um, yeah, so uh, so that's that's something that is is very important. Connection, connection with with uh, other human beings, uh, love, 
uh, connecting with energies of the heart, which is gratitude, inspiration, joy, and love. So activating these, uh, these, these four energies uh, and focusing on it is very, very important. Uh, thank you guys so much for this beautiful presence. And I hope to see you in class because we really, really practice really good practices that, uh, that are good for winter. Uh, we're going to do all this uh, standing postures, uh, bone breathing, really uh, work on lower back, uh, strengthening the kidney chi. So, uh, so thank you again for joining me. And let's do a final uh, kind of a, a short meditation of closing, if you will. So, uh, and let's finish it by actually activating the heart energy in our hand. And when we are rubbing our hands close together, uh, we are generating heat. But if you try to rub the center of the palms together, that the two centers of the palm rub against each other. See if you can do it. Ah, much more heat, right? So that's the pericardium. That's a very strong point, the center of the palm. This is a very healing uh, point. So I'm sitting here and it's a little cold actually. <laughs> so that's good. Now let's put it on the lower back and massage the lower back. <laughs> Let's start massaging the lower back, massaging the kidney, breathing into the lower back as you do that. See if you can breathe all the way down here. This is good. <laughs> you can do Qigong while sitting. And let's bring the hands to the heart and allow yourself to close your eyes and feel the kidney and the heart and we when we connect with our internal organs we we see them as kids our kids so allow yourself to visualize your kid here in the heart and just smile to it see if you can uh, and some people have a, I notice during the time I'm teaching, a lot of um, difficulty to feel love or to feel. So the first thing you want to feel if you, if this is kind of foreign to you is to just put your, put your attention here in the center of the chest. And then just feel appreciation to this, to the heart that is beating all these years that is doing this work. And just acknowledge it, you know, every organ has its own conscious, so it's like a being. And it's like saying hello to it and saying thank you to it. So just start with appreciating this little person that is called the heart center. And saying thank you so, so you're beating all the time without rest since I was born until now. I don't have any issues with my heart. I'm healthy. I can do all I need. I know I don't need to even think about it. Yeah. So that's deep appreciation. Yeah. And we usually think things for granted until they something is uh, go wrong, right? But we want to do it before it goes wrong. Yeah. So you, you actually, when you do that, it actually works better. It's preventative medicine. So you thank it for all the beats are in perfect alignment since the day you were born. Can you imagine? And then and smile to it. Smile to it and give it love and thanks. And so see if you can get an intimate connection with this organ from that place of appreciation and love. And see if you can get a smile back, a thank you back from it. Or whatever else you feel when you put your mind here with love, attention, 
and gratitude. Yeah? And the heart is the sun, is the fire element. And that fire is keeping you alive. It's cooking the water into chi, into steam. And see the illumination in the whole body from the sun. Yeah, the sun. Feel the energy of the heart, strong and vibrant. It's happy and radiant. Visualize a strong heart and happy heart. Nice. And let's open the hands and open the eyes. And thank you so much for joining me and finishing with this beautiful heart meditation. Thank, thank you, you, Peter, for mentioning that. <laughs> we finished this meditation with the heart, the most important uh, organ in the winter. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for joining thank me. You. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Gail, for your contribution and Peter and everybody else. And I'll see you next time and have a really wonderful holiday, wonderful Christmas, really hug people, sing songs and kiss people, <laughs> make love. <laughs> All right, bye. Bye guys. Thank bye. you. Ellie. Thank you. Ellie. Thank you.